Can you imagine answering a simple online ad for baby clothes, only to end up the victim of a horrific, unthinkable attack? That's exactly what happened to one expectant Colorado mother back in 2015. In March 2015, the town of Longmont was left reeling after the news broke. For one of the most unthinkable crimes, it all started with a fake pregnancy and ended with her cutting another woman to steal her unborn child. A pregnant woman named Michelle Wilkins had answered a Craigslist ad for baby clothes, only to be brutally attacked by the seller. 26-year-old Wilkins was beaten and left for dead, while her seven-month developed fetus was carved from her womb. As we delve into the disturbing events that transpired in Longmont back in 2015, join us in exploring the shocking details surrounding Michelle's encounter and the aftermath that left an entire town in disbelief. But before we continue, we would like you guys to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on any more true crime content. On March 18, 2015, the town of Longmont, Colorado was shaken by news of a grim and chilling crime. 26-year-old Michelle Wilkins, who was seven months pregnant, answered a Craigslist ad for baby clothes posted by another woman named Dinah Lane. But this friendly transaction took a sinister turn that no one could have predicted. Michelle was brutally attacked, beaten, and left for dead, while her unborn daughter was cut from her womb. In the aftermath, people were left wondering, why would anyone commit such a disturbing act? How did Dinah Lane come up with such a disturbing plan? And how did Michelle Wilkins manage to survive this trauma, both physically and emotionally? Over the weeks and months that followed, more details emerged that painted a picture of deception, violence, and ultimately justice. Michelle Wilkins was glowing with excitement for the arrival of her baby girl, who she planned to name Aurora. Her due date was fast approaching in late April. Like most expectant mothers, Michelle was preparing by decorating the nursery and gathering all the needed baby items. On that fateful day in March, Michelle came across a Craigslist post advertising free baby clothes and supplies. Given that she was on a tight budget, she decided to contact the seller, 34-year-old Dinah Lane, who lived nearby in Longmont. The two women spent about an hour casually chatting in Lane's home, with Michelle under the impression this was just a friendly transaction between two moms. But danger was lurking beneath the surface. At some point, Lane led Michelle down to her basement, claiming she had more baby items stored there. With no warning, she suddenly attacked. Lane smashed Michelle over the head with a lava lamp, stabbed her in the neck with the broken glass, and choked her until she passed out. And in a horrific moment that defies understanding, Lane then cut into Michelle's abdomen with a knife and removed her seven-month developed fetus. We went into this room the left down the stairs and there was I just remember there was like a game console and a lot of shelving and so she kind of looked like she was looking all through the shelving and so eventually I just said you know I actually don't really need anything thank you for sharing your house with me and giving me these and I just turned around to walk towards the door so she never found any girls no. but she was like looking for something yes okay and so then you started to leave and go back to the stairs? Yes. Okay. Can you tell the jury what happened then? Well, I was going up the stairs, and um, then she, as I was going up the stairs towards the door, she struck me from behind, um, right in my chest, and um, it's hard to describe exactly what it was. I mean, she hit me, and then it was sort of like, almost like pulling up my sweater, kind of scratching at me. Oh, wait, Ms. Wilkins, by the way, what kind of sweater were you wearing that day, you remember? Uh, I don't. Okay, that's right. And what was she hitting you with, could you tell? Oh, she was with her hands. Okay. She didn't have any thing in her hands, it was just her hands. So after she hit you, what did you say? Well, I mean, it was after she struck me, I mean, part of me wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt, and I said, did I have a spider or a bug or, you know, what was it? And she said, oh, I think I got it. And then it, she did it again. And so I was really confused about what she was trying to do. And um, 
and we'll try to go through this with specific questions. I know it's difficult, but let me try to be precise. So after she hit you a couple times in the spider, did you go back downstairs? She um, pulled me around by my sweater. She grabbed my sweater and she swung me around so I was facing the other direction. Okay, and then what happened? And then um, I kind of jerked myself away and I said, what are you doing? And she said, you know, she said, um, like, threw her hands up as if in defense and said, well, why would you go into someone's house and do that to them? Okay, and what did you say in response to that? I just, well, I felt like I was, you know, that this person is really unstable. And so I just held up my hands and I said, I don't want to hurt you, I just want to leave. And then what happened? And then she started saying, I don't trust you, you need to wait here while I call the cops. And during this time also, I slipped my cell phone because I didn't have a purse on me, I just slipped it into the bag because I felt like I didn't know where this was going. It, um, and so she's like grabbing me and shove, trying to shove me towards the bathroom. and. You know, I'm struggling, I'm pushing against her, and we're sort of wrestling, you know, as I'm trying to get back towards the door. Did she ever get you in the bathroom? She didn't. She was pushing me really forcefully towards the bathroom, and um, and I guess that at the last minute she threw me into the side bedroom. Okay. And. Um, and so, eventually, she got you in this bedroom. And, and can you tell the jury what you remember about what happened next? So she asked me, um, she kept threatening to call the cops. And so then I pulled out my cell phone at that moment and I said, well, I'll call the cops then. And she lunged for the phone and then she started hitting my face repeatedly with her fist and just wrestling me backwards. Was there a bed in that bedroom? There was. And did you get on that bed eventually? She, yeah, she kept pushing me back until I landed on my back on the bed. Okay, and tell the jury what you remember about what happened after that. Well, first she grabbed a pillow and she was trying to smother me with the pillow. And I was sort of windmilling my arms and trying to knock away the pillow. And at one point she did have it over my face and I was just trying to take deep, you know, keep breathing, and, um, which was really difficult. And so, but eventually, I guess I knocked it out of her hands because, and pulled it off and knocked it out of her hands because then she just went at me with her bare hands. Okay. Um, went at you, meaning what? Tell the jury what you remember. That she stopped using the pillow. I think I knocked it out of her hands, and then she just used her hands, kept hitting me and tried to choke me. I just remember I kept asking her why she was doing that. I just kept saying, why, why are you doing this? And I just remember this one point where I was just holding my hand over my head and I just said, I don't know why you're doing this, I love you. I don't know, and she picked it up and she smashed it over my head and that's when I held up my hand. I said, I don't know why you're doing this. I love you. And she said, if you love me, you'll let me do this. And then she stabbed it into my neck. And can you show the jury where on your neck she stabbed it? Right here. And you still have a scar there? I do. Okay. And that's on your left side of your neck? It is. All right. Do you remember feeling that stabbing? I do. And it was, I just remember everything was wet and slippery. And I remember when she stabbed me and then she removed it and then she continued to try to choke me after that. Were you bleeding? I, I was. I mean, I didn't see it. You know, I guess I was so caught up in the moment. I couldn't tell what the wet was between the liquid and the bottle or the blood. I didn't know. What happened next was nothing short of a miracle. Rather than bleeding to death in that basement, Michelle regained consciousness with barely enough strength to call 911 on her cell phone. Longmont 911, address of your emergency. 1620. Okay, what, tell, tell me what happened. 
she cut me. Who cut you? Um, what did she cut you with? And my apartment. First responders raced to save her life. While elsewhere in town, a separate drama was unfolding with Dinah Lane showing up at the hospital claiming she'd had a miscarriage. Hospital staff, unaware of the unfolding tragedy, treated Lane as the grieving mother of a deceased girl named Aurora. Lane adamantly resisted allowing medical personnel to take the lifeless body from her possession. In the emergency room, Michelle fought for her own life, fully sedated and with her intestines exposed. In those frantic moments, suspicion quickly mounted that something more sinister had taken place. Michelle was able to share details about her attack from her hospital bed, while evidence from Lane's home revealed a horrifying crime scene and her web of lies soon unraveled. Lane was arrested while Michelle fought for her life, and tragically, baby Aurora could not be resuscitated. Now to this day, many questions still remain about exactly why and how this disturbing crime occurred. What, <clears throat> describe how she appeared to you at that point. She was covered, I'm being covered from head to toe in blood. Um, and then the entire room was also blood everywhere. Okay. And could you tell whether, the, <coughs> could you tell whether Ms. Wilkins was injured? Yes. And was she? Yes, she was. And can you describe the injuries you saw? I had to get closer to her. Um, as soon as I entered the room, I went straight to the side of the bed where she was um, and began to ask her what, it, what happened and where she was injured. And she pointed to her stomach and said she had been stabbed in her stomach. Did you look at her stomach? I did. She had um, maternity pants on and a stretching material. So I pulled them up and looked down saw a very large injury to her. And can you describe uh, concisely what you saw? I saw her intestines hanging out of her stomach. Okay. Was Ms. Wilkins conscious? She was. And did you talk to her? I did, yes sir. Um, what did she say? I asked her where else she was injured. Um, what did she tell you? She told me, she pointed to her neck and I observed an injury roughly in this area of her neck. Was that injury, the injury to her neck, was that bleeding? It was, yes sir. Bleeding heavily or lightly or how? Um, I guess a medium flow. Blood was okay. constantly coming out of it. Okay, and uh, did she describe any other injuries for you at that point? I don't recall, I just focused on those two. Did she say anything to you about being pregnant? She did. What'd she say? I asked her, I was trying to figure out what was going on, um, and I asked her what happened, and she said that she was answering a Craigslist ad and that she didn't live at the residence. So then I, I said, well, you don't live here. You know, what, what's your name? She said, my name's Michelle. Um, and I said, well, who did this to you? And she said, D, she's the lady of the house. So let's rewind a few months and look at what might have motivated Dinah Lane's actions. Despite actively maintaining the lie that she was pregnant for over a year, she didn't fit the typical profile of a female abductor who steals a baby. So why did Dinah Lane mastermind such an elaborate illusion full of fake ultrasound printouts, social media posts about her pregnancy, and even a baby shower? Why did she allegedly attack and mutilate Michelle Wilkins in order to steal an almost full-term fetus? There's been speculation about everything from mental illness to deep personal issues driving her behavior, but the true reasons may never be fully understood. By all accounts over the previous year, Dinah Lane went to extreme lengths to convince the world that she was expecting a baby. She had been dating her boyfriend David Ridley at the time, and he says she deceived him thoroughly throughout her pregnancy. Lane supposedly claimed at different times that she was pregnant with a baby boy named James, or that it was a baby girl named Aurora, the same name that Michelle had decided on. Lane posted photos of her fake growing belly bump on social media and shared details about doctor's visits and baby preparations with friends. Her boyfriend even took time off work several times for her prenatal appointments, only for them to leave each time without seeing a doctor. 
In another twisted move, Lane allegedly threw herself a baby shower in early 2015. Photos show her and Ridley smiling together as they hold up cute baby clothes as gifts for their future child. Little did the poor guy know it was all an elaborate sham. It's theorized that the made-up due date kept changing any time suspicions were raised, right up until the day of her heinous attack on Michelle Wilkins. The truth finally came out on March 18, 2015, when Lane's boyfriend returned home to a grisly and emotionally scarring scene. In their bathtub lay a deceased newborn baby girl, with Lane claiming she'd just had a miscarriage. But based on Michelle Wilkins's brave testimony and physical evidence collected, investigators were quickly able to piece together what really happened. The violent physical struggle and bloody crime scene were bad enough on their own, but even more disturbing was realizing the amount of calculation and preparation behind Lane's actions. The attack wasn't impulsive or spontaneous, but rather the culmination of her intricate web of lies. It's theorized she purposefully sought out a pregnant woman through Craigslist, hoping to steal their baby once her own fake one never materialized. Everything pointed to her elaborate fantasy life tragically crashing into reality. Critical to the case was Michelle Wilkins' ability to take the witness stand a year later during Dino Lane's court trial. While understandably emotional, Michelle courageously faced down her attacker and recounted the horrific experience. Despite unimaginable trauma and violence, Michelle shared how her only thoughts had been protecting her unborn baby, Aurora. Even when Lane went for a knife, Michelle fought back with all her might. Michelle's remarkable strength and resilience became evident during the trial when it was revealed that amid the assault, she uttered, I love you, to Lane. In a chilling response, Lane reportedly said, if you love me, you'll let me do this, proceeding to stab Michelle in the neck. Michelle's public statements showed incredible grace and wisdom, saying she felt more pity than hatred for her unstable attacker. Her ability to emerge strong and move forward from this tragedy resonated with moms everywhere. And her words surely helped bring some sense of closure and justice, with Lane ultimately being found guilty of all charges, including attempted murder. I choose to use my time to address you directly, Dinell, because up to this very moment you have refused to acknowledge us, the victims of your violent actions. I am a compassionate person. This is the foundation of the beliefs from which all others grow. It is clear that you need healing, and it is my sincere belief that you get it. However, there were atrocities committed against me and my daughter that sent a ripple out, a ripple of pain out to so many others, and they must be addressed. Those committed against Aurora's father and all of her grandparents, against law enforce enforcement and first responders who cannot unsee the trauma that you created, and against your partner and daughters who surely have guilt, shame, and trauma of their own to wrestle with for the rest of their lives because of you. I did not learn until the trial just how many opportunities you had to do the right thing and then chose not to. You knowingly left me to die multiple times. The only tears that you shed during the trial were those of self-pity to the sound of your own voice as your lies were slowly revealed. And yet, even now, you cannot come clean about what actually occurred. You embrace your narcissistic fantasy to fulfill the lie you created, and it was more important than my right to live and Aurora's right to live. This is a picture of her. I'm gonna object at this point. Thank you. Ms. Lane, please direct your comments to me. I trust the judge to make a wise decision on what you believe to be fair, but I believe that you should receive the maximum penalty because I believe you've lost your privilege to live in our society, not only because of your actions during the attack, but also your actions since the attack. Your inability to acknowledge the immense cruelty and evil you committed only proves you are not fit to walk free amongst us ever again. I hope the counsel you receive reflects that acknowledging the obvious, the proven that you've committed these horrific acts, the least you can do is to begin, to begin atoning for what you did. What is done cannot be undone, but I fervently hope that you use the rest of your time on this earth with meditation and prayer to help you come to terms with what you have done it is your only chance for healing the hurt that you have caused.
Your Honor, objection at this point. This is inappropriate. What's in it? May we approach, Your Honor? Everybody sit down. Ms. Wilkins, are there any, is there anything else you want me to know? That is all. Thank you. The point is moot. Thank you. Dinah Lane is currently serving a minimum 89-year sentence without parole, essentially life behind bars. Initially, Boulder County prosecutors had aimed for a 126-year prison term for Lane. However, during the sentencing hearing, the district attorney's office reevaluated each count, ultimately seeking a 108-year sentence. The sentencing unfolded with meticulous consideration. Attempted murder, maximum 48 years plus five years of parole, consecutive. Unlawful termination of pregnancy, maximum 32 years plus five years of parole, consecutive. First degree assault, 10 years plus five years of parole, consecutive. First degree assault, 10 years plus five years of parole, consecutive. Second degree assault, five years plus three years of parole, concurrent. Michelle Wilkins continues to heal both physically and mentally from her terrifying ordeal, and people are still left wondering what can drive someone to commit such acts. We may never fully understand Dinah Lane's mindset or personal demons. Boulder County District Attorney Stan Garnett, visibly emotional, implored the judge for the maximum sentence, emphasizing that baby Aurora never had the chance to experience life with her family. Chief District Judge Maria Birkencotter, during the sentencing, pointedly highlighted Lane's lack of remorse throughout the trial. Expressing sympathy for the Wilkins family, she acknowledged the tragedy of baby Aurora never realizing the life she was meant to have. Lane, when the sentence was read, wept, and her defense attorneys announced their intention to appeal. Ms. Lane planned this attack and left Ms. Wilkins to bleed out and die. Ms. Lane is to be sentenced to a sentence the court finds, having considered the mitigating circumstances and the aggravating circumstances that totals 100 years in the Department of Corrections to be followed by the mandatory periods of parole. At a post-sentencing news conference, District Attorney Garnett and Michelle Wilkins addressed the media. Garnett, describing the case as one of the most vicious and cruel he had encountered, asserted that justice was served. Wilkins, reflecting on the acknowledgement by the judge, expressed gratitude for being seen amid the challenging process. During the trial, a taped interview with Lane, conducted by detectives from the Longmont Police Department, was presented by the prosecution. Lane, in the recording, shifted blame, alleging that Wilkins had a knife and attempted to stab her. Lane remained emotionally detached throughout the trial, but when the recording played, she wept. She did not testify, and the defense rested without presenting any witnesses. Defense attorneys argued that the attack was impulsive and not premeditated, advocating for accountability on the grounds of reckless manslaughter, not attempted murder. However, the jury disagreed with this perspective. Following the reading of guilty verdicts, Michelle Wilkins, holding a large picture of her deceased daughter, addressed Lane directly during her testimony. She expressed the need for healing and her sincere belief that Lane should seek it. Wilkins accused Lane of knowingly leaving her to die multiple times and criticized Lane's lack of remorse during the trial. She asserted that Lane had forfeited the privilege of living in society due to both the attack and her subsequent actions highlighting Lane's failure to acknowledge the cruelty and evil she had committed. Wilkins expressed a hope that Lane would receive the maximum sentence, allowing her time to atone, reflect, and meditate on her actions through prayer. In contrast, Lane chose not to testify on her behalf during the sentencing hearing, but wept when friends and family spoke about her loss of a son. Lane's mother and sister portrayed her as a loving and compassionate person, asserting that the attack was out of character. The defense sought concurrent sentences, emphasizing Lane's cooperation in prison and her potential for rehabilitation. Conversely, the prosecution urged for a unique sentence tailored to the unprecedented nature of the crime. They argued that never before in Boulder County or Colorado had a pregnant woman been intentionally attacked to steal her baby, with the woman surviving but the baby perishing. The prosecution advocated for consecutive sentences to reflect the complexity of the case and the cruel manner in which the crimes were committed. 
suggesting that the court should consider the broader context of a crime spree rather than a single criminal act. The Dino Lane case serves as a chilling reminder that human behavior can defy prediction, even when it seems utterly unfathomable. In these moments of darkness, stories like Michelle's emerge, highlighting the extraordinary power of hope, resilience, and our shared humanity. This shocking crime leaves us with chilling questions about human nature and motivation that may never be fully answered. The details surrounding Michelle Wilkins' brave survival and road to recovery remind us that even in darkness, the human spirit can persevere. This unbelievable true story highlights how unpredictable and incomprehensible such a disturbing act of violence truly was. Now we want to hear your thoughts. What questions or reactions did this case spark for you? Leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting and hit subscribe and the notification bell to see more true crime content like this. We thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.